how can I retain the information as much as possible without having to relocate like five days before, uh, like a day before the exam because by then you will have like 22 topics which are all very content heavy and you want to be like okay I only have to go through like briefly most of it and then only have to go in depth for like the last few topics so what you want to do is like take your notes to whatever resources you have if it were your textbook, your lecture, maybe your lecture transcript, if there is. YouTube definitely have transcripts, all that stuff. Get all your resources. Just browse through and then write down all the like keywords, heading titles, side heading, uh, subheading titles, all like stuff that like you think is important. Like it, it'd be quite obvious if like bolded words. Maybe some words that are not bolded, but you think they are important. Just write it down in a list of keywords, right? So you probably spend about 20 to 30 minutes doing this. Anything longer is a bit like too much, I think. Because you, you don't need to go fully in depth. All you need to do is have like 80% or 90% of the words. Like if you had full mastery of all these, put them together, like you know how each word relates to another. Of these words, you like you master the topic. Like the ten percent that you miss out, yeah, you can just use exam papers. You can, I don't know, find out later, or maybe even if you don't find out later. Like you, you do fine. And by the way, if when you, uh like late on the later steps if you do find extra words like you can just add them on anyways so don't take too long for this time so the second thing is you have like all these keywords right? uh, some of them hopefully would make a bit more sense to you like you actually know what this means it's not like completely foreign and you like in that case, you'll start with the words that keywords that you actually like have some sense of, or not really know the exact definition. But if someone would ask you what is it, you could like sort of describe it to them. But if you're unsure, you can just search out the definition. But however, the the intention must be to look at the word, find the like know what it means, and then try to relate it to other keywords which sounds very daunting I know but like this use of brain power is like productive actually even though it seems very very slow like I mean shit slow like at the start I, I actually like spent like a sh sh shit of time just for a few keywords just to make sense of it but like it's worth it though when you have like multiple light bulb moments or it, have you ever like have that moment where you you, you just suddenly get something and like holy shit this was this thing to this the whole time or like oh that was like that the whole time Oh, oh, then now I know how to do this shit. Like that kind of light bulb moments where you have like every once in a while. Like, like screw ha having it once every once in a blue moon. Just, just, just try this. It, you, you will spend like a shit lot of time having like those realizations. But like holy shit, I never knew this topic was like that. Like you can view it this way. Like that's what you want because. Having such a big picture understanding is so much more important than just diving into the little details. Because if if you read the pit like do your usual method, which is like watch a whole lecture from start to end, read the whole textbook from start to end, or it notes, you are very likely to not know what's the main point until like maybe twenty minutes into the lecture. By then you're like you're lost already, but Jesus.
So either way, so go through your is a keyword. Try to link them to each other at the start. Like don't it is not confirm. Like you're just hypothesizing. I repeat, you are not like saying this is like the only way to link these words together. You are trying to hypothesize how these keywords are linked to each other. And so you do this, which is called pre-trunking, which actually, if you don't want to do it, it's not that bad because you, after that, you will have to go down this list anyways for the actual step. But it's, it makes things simple. Like sometimes there are just things that yeah, it straight up just makes sense to put them together. And you, okay, importantly, it's, you wouldn't have to actually memorize it. So the important note is do not, I repeat, do not use actual hit type of the title, subtitle, subheadings, all those stuff as like your basis of grouping because you, you might as well just use the textbook. Anyways. So, but this applies for later, the second step of my anyways. So, after that, after like your pre chunking, which is like, oh, this thing, these two things are linked in this way, and it makes sense to you. And then there's like a bunch of other keywords that haven't been chunked because, you know. So, what you would do is go down the list, wherever you want to start, actually. Just look at uh, look at what it means. Search it out if you need to, with the intention of thinking, like, why is this important in this topic? And how is this keyword linked to other keywords? So of course you can see at the start it will be like shit because you only have one keyword, or your pre-chunk keywords, which by the way you can break up the pre-chunks if they make lesser sense than what you find out next. You link in like, okay. so first few words you like, okay, just get a general understanding of stuff. And then suddenly reach a keyword and then you're like wait this links to another keyword maybe I was back or you recall seeing it or like browsing through and then you can just jump to that word like you can just jump around with it. Heck, you can even scramble the words up it doesn't matter because all you need to do is take charge of the order you learn use all you want to do is just start with where it makes sense and then link together like it's basically you want to build on existing knowledge and the best is this existing knowledge the closest thing to existing knowledge is the words that makes more sense to you so you want to build on, on that before you like throw it on like the words that or the concepts of ideas they are like before you do it. so you go on the list of all the and, and you actually might not think of like certain categories which correspond to like what they are in, like their importance. So you could see like certain humans have similar reasons of importance. I P like reasons of importance. So this is like actually a bit more subjective. Like there are so many ways to group things, right? And sometimes these groups are like they don't help you to remember stuff. And it's not intuitive to like if I if the, the, the whole point of this is to make it such that it's intuitive and logical. So, at some point, you think of like categories that in your mind. Or oh, it's like this, this thing is important because of this. Or oh, this thing is also important because of this reason. And then this will be like a chunk, essentially. And these chunks can also be broken up because 
it might not be the best chance, but having chance is better than having no chance. And some chance are useful, like if it helps you store the information, but that's for you to decide, right? You have to experiment and shit. And sometimes it's yeah, if it, it, it's not logical intuitive, you throw it away. I'll just put it at the side. Like, I feel like it's not mentioned, but the process of analyzing, evaluating all these categories, right? Potential categories. It's like learning was to go. And like, think about it, like, if you were considering which, let's say there are like four boxes and of, of category, I think like that. You have this isolated piece of information. And as you're considering how to put this information, you categorize it, like which boxes you go. But does it not even fit in these four boxes? Like you need to make another box, which doesn't make sense if you put it together. All of these considerations. Like by then, wouldn't you naturally then have a better understanding of that isolated piece of information? A, a great example that was given this like you know when you want to solve a puzzle you, you, you don't like put the piece look at it and then put it down and then you take the second piece analyze every single little minute detail of it and put it down and you do the same for like 500 pieces like by the time you reach like the fifth piece fifth piece you will have forgotten like, The rest, like essentially, and you have to take it back again, relook at it, put it down. I assure you, you are never gonna finish that puzzle. I. It doesn't make any sense, right? But that's what we are doing for learning, which I'm also quite guilty of. We look at isolated pieces of information, look it through very deeply, analyze every single little component, of it, and then we go to the next piece of information and the next piece. And by the end of the day, we've forgotten ninety percent of the shit. But we've studied for like six hours, and it's basically useless. Yeah. Okay, but all these steps that I've said is a bit, but it, it might not make any sense. But I'll see if if there's any like thing you need to clarify. Just just. DM me or something, or comment down below. I will try to, to the best of my current understanding. But, but okay. if there's one thing to take away from this, it's not even the steps. Like the steps are really It's just a, maybe a, like a way to start. The more important thing is, like, the faster you learn this, the better. Do not look at information as isolated pieces of information. And what makes it a piece of information important? What makes it important such that your brain would will be willing to waste its precious energy and calories to keep it? Is if it is linked to multiple pieces of information, it is related to a lot of things that you really need to create existing knowledge. And that's why your brain will keep it. So, by investing in having the big picture understanding of everything, and then going to the minute details later on, using your flashcards if they cannot fit into the map, or like whatever stru structures you conjure out, I don't know. You will retain more information. And also, after that, don't get complacent and then have to like use spatial position. Try to recall the whole thing, whatever you process and go down the whatever. Every three days, then five days, all those stuff like, like it's covered so much online, so I won't be covering here. But all you need to know is you need to space it out. Do not reread the notes and shit. 
I do not like look at it. Okay. Not any cues, basically. Like, cues are like, you just look at like a small portion of it and oh, this, after this, 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 this. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because in exams, no one's gonna help you give you like the first three, key, uh, three words for you to like continue the same section. So, full complete recall using special repetition for things that you have encoded. Yeah, that's about it. But as you can get the like, encoding is like the more difficult. Like, you, you can literally start special repetition and active recall. Like, why is instant? But encoding is like, it's a bit hard. Like, you just like, spend like nine months and I'm still shit. So, but, but then again, you guys are smart, so I'm serious. If, if you don't rush, if you are willing to experiment, make mistakes, then keep asking. I, I assure you, your progress will be way faster than mine.